So uh, today I'm talking about uh, zero downtime JavaScript app deployment, uh, but mainly in the context of Rails and Ember. Yeah, so it's in the context of Ember and Rails, but you know, there's no reason that this can't be used with any other frameworks, really. Um, so uh, yeah, that's my name, Twitter handle. Uh, I work at a place called Neo. We're a design and engineering consulting company. We do production apps and, and uh, prototype apps in Ember. So talk to me about that if you want. Uh, so this was originally inspired by Luke Malia, who works at Yap. Uh, so I saw his talk at RailsConf. Uh, I really loved the idea, uh, but I wanted to, so he used uh, you know, Rake uh, and stuff like that, which I didn't really want to do. Uh, and I wanted to use native tooling for Ember, you know, things like Ember CLI. Uh, so, you know, what I'm going to be talking about today, the idea is similar, the only difference is approach, implementation, and uh, I try to sort of experiment and push its boundaries a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, so why do you care about deploying JavaScript apps in an easier way? Uh, so first of all, deploying your backend sucks. It takes a really long time. Uh, you know, your user is going to experience service interruptions. Uh, while your app is booting up, uh, you know, it just sucks. So try to minimize that if you can. <clears throat> and also, if you're doing a lot of Ember, you know, uh, you know, like especially the application that I was working on, uh, you know, a few months ago, it was super uh, front end heavy. So most of the changes we're making were actually just in JavaScript. But every time we made a change, we have to re redeploy the entire app. Uh, and that just became uh, really, really annoying after a while. And uh, Ember CLI started becoming super awesome, uh, and I wanted to use that. And along with uh, many other uh, set of tools like Grunt, Bower, and Broccoli, and you know, if you use other frameworks, you know, any kind of Yeoman um, uh, generated apps as well. <clears throat> and also the other thing I wanted to do was uh, really being able to develop my front end independent of my back end. Uh, you know, like uh, I think a lot of applications nowadays ha just have the entire Ember app living under the assets folder. Um, you know, it's a lot more convoluted and difficult to manage. Uh, so this is, the entire idea centers around having index.html as the application container. Uh, so when, when a user hits your server, all your server needs to know how to do is serve that index.html. Uh, and then you let Ember handle uh, routing and fetching data and all that kind of stuff. And the back end, you can develop it strictly as an API server. Uh, and then you know, there comes uh, added benefits of being able to develop an you know, iOS app on top of it or whatever. Um, so that's always good. So this is what the index.html looks like. It's what Ember CLI spits out. As you can see, it's pretty clean, uh, very manageable. Um, and uh, inside of it, it contains uh, all of its related assets. And you can see here that you know, uh, uh, inside of the CloudFront CDN URL, we have the uh, deploy key uniquely baked in. And uh, just FYI, I'm using a timestamp for that right now, but it could be anything, really. Um, so this is the overall uh, architecture of it, <coughs> you know, the developer. Uh, can push both to the front end and the back end. When you push to the back end, it goes straight to the rail server. When you push to the front end, you do two things. One is you deploy your index.html to Redis, and the other one is you deploy all your assets to your S3 server. Uh, and then you can very easily draw CloudFront in front of that uh, to make it serve super fast. And then uh, they come together at the browser. So each deploy is going to have a unique deploy key, like I said before, and that can be optionally synced up with a backend. And uh, what that means is basically if you have a very volatile backend, right? So if your API is changing all the time, uh, what you can do is you can actually hardwire, uh, you can hardwire a deploy key inside of some kind of a YAML file if you want, you know, really anywhere you want. Uh, it can even be a constant in your app. Uh, and then every time you want to, you're ready for advancing to the next stage, uh, you can just change that key, or you can just say latest. So that's always going to serve the latest version of the app all the time, uh, which is kind of nice. 
And the other thing that's kind of cool here is you can uh, very easily preview your app. So as you can see here, I have a query string here, deploy equals canary. So what that means is uh, you always deploy your front end first. And uh, you can have your product owner or product manager uh, take a look at the app by just going to that URL. The entire app is going to be loaded up. That's going to be the latest version. Uh, your user won't know about it. And once the product owner gives you the go-ahead, uh, you can then uh, basically have a single commit that changes that YAML file, uh, which is going to help you serve the latest version of the app. Uh, so sorry if you don't use Rails here, but uh, you know, this is Rails. Uh, uh, basically, all the, uh, all the routes is going to application controller uh, anywhere you hit. And all it needs to know how to do is uh, deploy index.html, uh, which we can look at a little bit later. So that's coming from that front end module up on line two. And uh, inside of the front end module, we have an index.html method. As you can see, the logic is pretty simple. Uh, it just figures out what that key is for Redis. Uh, don't worry about namespace right now. We'll come back to it. But uh, you know, in the else clause, you have the deploy key colon index.html, and then you, uh, Redis will get that for you. Uh, so essentially, if no key is given when the uh, user hits the server, uh, it's going to read it from the YAML file. If you give it a sp specific deploy key, it can go to that. And if you give it canary, it's going to give you the latest. Uh, so that's really all there is to it. So in terms of uh, on the front end, I'm using Ember CLI plus Grunt for this. Uh, big shout out to Ember CLI. It's super nice. Uh, <clears throat> so this is how I deploy uh, Grunt dash prod or dash p. And uh, this one command do, uh, does a few things here. So it first grabs a, uh, generates a deploy key. Uh, again, I'm using the current timestamp right now. Uh, and then it builds the project. Uh, and then uh, it, so basically Broccoli takes care of prepending my CDN URL and stuff like that. Uh, and then I'm going to insert a uh, deploy, the deploy key into the CDN URL, upload to S3, and then I upload index.html to Redis. And uh, that's what that, sorry, this is coffee script. Um, if you don't use that, just in case. Uh, but uh, yeah, so the, uh, on top, if target is prod, the, those are the, it's ignore shell done. Uh, that just spits out some um, text. But you know, it's really the first four tasks there. Uh, so what this allows us to do, if we push its boundaries a little bit, is uh, allows us to have a multi-app architecture. And what that means is basically having multiple index.html containers uh, that talks to the same backend. So uh, an easy example here might be you know, if you're uh, the team that works on New York Times, you can have an Ember app that serves the content for reading. And then you're also going to have uh, basically like an admin or a CMS app that is completely separate from your main app. They all talk to the same API, but they don't know each other's existence at all. So, yeah, so uh, I'm going to do some diagramming here. I have a JavaScript app and an API server. Uh, so, this is what that original architecture looks like. The browser uh, hits the index route, the server talks to Redis, grabs the app, gives it back to the browser. And then, uh, if we have another app, we just nest it under a different namespace. So as you can see here on the bottom right, uh, the key becomes admin colon deploy key index.html when, uh, when the user requests slash admin, where this, this could also be a subdomain, uh, really whatever you want. <coughs> so if we go back to that front end module, uh, you know, basically we can optionally give it a namespace. And then it just inserts that namespace as a key uh, to grab that different index.html. Uh, so, you know, if you use Rails, you would know that there is a, a, a thing called Rails Engine, which is basically a mini app you can plug into your main application. And then uh, what that allows us to do is encapsulate security logic, serialization, routing, and migrations. Uh, it's really, really nice. <clears throat> and then the app can actually live as a gem 
uh, off in a completely different GitHub repo. So uh, if we're talking about admin, for example, that's really important because you, you want to encapsulate all your security logic uh, inside of a different place. Um, so yeah, so this is basically what that looks like. Uh, the browser hits the app, it goes to the admin's engine, and then uh, the admin engine knows how to grab the a JavaScript application. So uh, going back to that, you know, we have our regular app, and then we plug that engine into our uh, main app. The engine has access to all of our main, uh, to the main application, uh, to its models and helper methods and things like that. Uh, uh, so it plugs it in very nicely. Uh, and what's more interesting here is that we can have different teams working on different uh, part of the application, right? So it could just be uh, a separation between Ember and your API server, or it could be uh, a separation in terms of an entire service uh, on the bottom there. So you can have a team that works on uh, basically the admin app for our main application. And now I have to just understand what the main API server does and what its endpoints are. Uh, and then you can, uh, you can very easily encapsulate that. Um, so, yeah. So I'm just going to do a quick demo here to show you guys what deployment looks like. Uh, hopefully I don't mess it up. So I have an app deploy to Heroku here. It's a, it's a new startup called Blogger. Uh, it just serves off some blog posts uh, and some really awesome content. And uh, let's see, I wanted to make some changes to the Ember app. So this is Ember CLI. I'm just going to change some CSS. Uh, I don't want to do anything crazy here. Uh, and then if I deploy this, so yeah, that's all it takes to deploy the app. So now let's say I go to my product manager and like, well, <clears throat> we have this new design. Uh, I want to see, you can test it with some users, uh, you know, talk to the business people and see how they think. Uh, so all we have to do is this. Now we have the newest version of the app. And then anywhere we go, that app stays because it's just Ember. And once the uh, product manager gives us the go ahead, we can go inside. So we hit, here we have a deploy key. We can go in here. Make a single commit. And then we can push the Heroku. Oh, by the way, so if you refresh this, it goes to the old version, because we don't have that query string. So we deploy this. Now if we refresh. we have the newest version of the app. So it's all hardwired, front end and back end. <clears throat> uh, so the other thing was the admin app. So this is the uh, blogger admin. So this is a completely separate Ember app, as you can see. So I'm going to change something here. Title 3 to Zendesk is awesome. Save. And then that shows up our main app, because they're just talking to the same API. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. So next. So what else this allows us to do is, uh, you know, we have the entire index.html string before we serve it out to the user. We can inject whatever we want into the app, right? So, you know, this allows us to do stuff like A-B testing, and feature toggling, which I'll, uh, which I'll show you, uh, you know, kind of what I mean by that. So this is one example of A-B testing. This is Hi-Rise. Uh, they have some A-B tests going on, right? So uh, marketing page A versus marketing page B. 
Uh, you also have uh, page A versus page A plus some more stuff. And then you also have page A with different background images. Uh, so yeah, how would we do that with uh, what I was presenting just now? Um, so you know, same, same diagram here. The API server has the opportunity to inject various variables into the app uh, before it serves it out to the browser. And uh, so that's what that line is. So I have a module here called HTML handler. I, I call insert flags. Uh, I can insert whatever I want in it. Uh, I'm not going to show you the app. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to show you the code, but you can look at it uh, on the repo, which I'll show you later. So what comes out is basically this. On the top of the uh, head tag, we have a window.env, and then I have various uh, you know, flags in there. And you can do other things as well, uh, like current user ID, analytics params, uh, really anything. <clears throat> so what the backend is responsible for is the uh, injection and randomization of uh, data, and then the front end decides what to do with that data. So inside of Ember, I have a service called Feature Manager. And uh, what that's responsible is that it translates data into semantic information the application can understand. So you know, like I was showing before, I have A or B, right? But what does that mean to my app? So what that means is A is I'm catering this to marketers, right? B is I'm catering this to educators. And based on those logic, I inject this uh, into my uh, controller. So I actually ha will have access to that in my template, in my controller. Uh, and then I can do whatever I want with that. So in the example of uh, uh, page A versus page A with something more inserted, right? It's just a simple if clause in our templates. Uh, and then other than that, you, you know, you can have other stuff like feature toggles, like show pony or not show pony, uh, and things like that. Uh, so the logic around uh, the A-B test can live either in the controller, right? So here I have page header. Uh, so if it is marketer, then I'm going to say this blog is for marketers. Otherwise, this blog is for educators. Uh, in my template, I can just refer to that directly. Or I can have this in my template where I say, you know, if show pony, I'm going to show pony. Otherwise, not going to show that. Uh, and then, you know, with analytics, you can independently track each variation uh, very easily uh, using things like mixed panel uh, or heap. Uh, and then you can show some business results, hopefully. So. Uh, I'm going to show you what, what I mean by that as well. So I actually have A-B testing uh, in here right now. So I don't have any super complicated logic. I just have a uh, random, like it's either A or B randomly. So right now, in this case, I'm, I'm guessing that if it's a marketer, they like the fact that uh, there is a Wikipedia definition of what marketing is. And then I'm saying, hey, marketers, and I have a chat plug in here, uh, say if they want to chat. But if I go uh, refresh again, uh, I didn't make any changes to my code. Now as an educator, uh, as, as you can see, I don't have definition of education on there, and I don't have a chat app. So um, you, know, you can really do anything you want here. It's pretty simple. Uh, and then now let's say we wanted to toggle on show pony. Uh, I don't have any logic here, but you know there's a lot of gems that help you do that. But if we just say true, and of course you can build a UI on top of this if you want. Uh, This is why backend sucks. It's so slow.
Now if we refresh, the pony shows up. So yeah, so that's been toggled. Cool, that's it. Uh, so I have a sample app here on this uh, GitHub repo if you want to check it out. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys. There's my contact info uh, if you want to ask questions. Uh, and again, this is pretty customizable for the most part. Grunts is really customizable. Uh, and there's no reason that you can't use this for really any kind of frameworks. Uh, yeah, cool, thank you. Yeah, good question. Um, it's nice to serve it out of the same backend because you don't you don't have to deal with course. Uh, oh, but are you you're talking about reading it from CloudFront? We can. Yeah, it's up to you. You can read it from anywhere. Just a string, right? So. Is there a reason why you picked uh, Grunt over Bacoli? Yeah. So. Uh, from my understanding, again, like I'm not super familiar with Grunt, uh, but uh, it's good for running sort of like uh, random tasks, right? Broccoli, I think, is good for dealing with assets, uh, compilation, and, and stuff like that. So I, I do use Broccoli instead of Ember CLI, um, but I'd, I'd love to explore. If I can do it all in Broccoli, I would. Again, and the other thing is that there are a lot of plugins for Grunt built in already, so uh, I wouldn't have to write anything from scratch, which is super nice. Yeah. Does this have like a standard uh, Rails API? Uh, yeah, so I'm actually using the Rails API gem, but uh, yeah. Can you use the active model serializers and all that? Yeah, so I, I, yeah, I do use that, but you know, you can, you can serve out your um, API whatever way you want. Uh, I do like the serializer in the sense that I can have a different serializer for my admin engine, and basically for my admin app, you know, I can, I can uh, very granularly control what data is passed back and forth and what's allowed uh, in terms of like editing, updating, and deleting, and things like that. All right, thank you.